Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for the week of March 28th. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here, Taurus, and we're going to do a Celtic cross uh, this week. I'm not going to do two parts this week either. I'm going to do them. Um, uh, I'm just going to do one part and we're going to clarify in this part as well. Uh, this is the Prisma Visions Tarot, by the way, if you're wondering what deck this is, but uh, Taurus, uh, let's see here. You start off with the Queen of Cups. Uh, Queen of Cups has been coming up quite a bit uh, at this time uh, and uh, pretty much for everyone. It seems that our emotions are extremely important at this time or our emotions could be really guiding our life at this time as well. Uh, she really values her emotions. She also is willing to, you know, she really cares about how she feels. <laughs> so uh, I feel like it's going to be very important that you care about how you feel and make sure that you're feeling good or you're doing things that make you feel good at this time because, again, she truly cares. Uh, in the area of your crossing, your energy, you have the Six of Swords. Six of Swords is like moving on to calmer shores. Um, for you, I feel like it's like a lack of guidance. Those are the words that I'm getting. Normally in the boat on the Six of Swords, there's a guy in the back of the boat and he kind of represents a ferryman. He represents a guide. He goes back and forth between the choppy waters on the Six of Swords. So he kind of like understands how to, you know, navigate the choppy waters. Again, some of you, I feel like are feeling like you're lacking guidance or you're lacking a guide at this time in general. I don't think that's true, by the way. Uh, it's funny. You end with this um, reverie card at the end, which is like an oracle card that comes with this deck and there's a ferryman in it. <laughs> so I feel like you're finding your guidance. In the area of your thoughts, you have the six of cups. A lot of you definitely could be thinking about the past. You could be thinking about uh, I, like a million things. I get uh, just a ton of stuff that I'm thinking about right now uh, with this Six of Cups. I don't really feel it's like a good or a bad thing. I think it just it, like I, I just think that maybe you're focused on things in the past, things that you wanted, how things are kind of going in your life, how things could potentially turn out, how you want them to turn out. I have all these like questions, swirling thoughts on the Six of Cups. And so that's where I feel like you're at with this energy. Now, the good news is that your foundation is the hermit. The hermit is kind of like having a dark night of the soul, which I feel like you've been through. But normally the hermit is standing at the top of a mountain and he is holding out his inner light. It's like he's found his inner guidance. He understands what he needs to do to kind of uh, come down from the mountain in a lot of ways to share his wisdom. And so I feel for a lot of you, it's kind of like you have been through a lot of difficulties, but it's like you're finding your own inner guidance. It's like you don't need a guide in the first place. I'm not saying you don't need guides. I'm sure someone's going to take it there. But what I'm saying is you can guide yourself at this time. Uh, in the past, you have the Ten of Cups. Um, again, I feel like a lot of people are just feeling this right now, just like thinking about when things were easier, thinking about when things were different, maybe when the gas prices are lower, whatever. <laughs> Not a political statement, by the way, for those of you that are going to take it there. Uh, but what I would say is um, that a lot of you could just be thinking about the past with that Six of Cups. Ten of Cups is fortune after difficulty, thinking when things were better. Again, I don't really feel like these are bad times. And again, I feel a lot of people could be thinking about these things. Uh, why do we think about them? Uh, so we can make them better. So we can come up with better solutions. Um, I think that's really what the world needs right now is just better solutions in general, um, which I've said before. But the problem is I feel like that um, it's like we're waiting for permission for for someone to say like, hey, go create this solution. When maybe we have a solution, again, the solutions are gonna come from us. The solutions are not gonna come from, you know, government or, you know, uh, any you know, aliens or anything else. As I always say, we have to save ourselves right now. And I've been saying this for like two years now that really we have to be the ones to save ourselves. Nobody can save us. No one can, uh, you know, change things. It has to come from us. We're entering into this time of Aquarius and I'm not referring to the age of Aquarius. I'm referring to all the energy that's moving into Aquarius. Aquarius wants us to all be our own little star, wants us to all become famous. <laughs> Does that mean everybody's going to become famous? No, but it means that we all have something inside of us that makes us special and it could be a solution. So we're going to see in the future, you know, maybe not this year, but as we move into the future, as we move closer to like 2030, 2033, um, you know, little things, it's, it's not going to take that long. But between now and then, I feel like we're going to see just like random people coming up with good solutions to problems that we're dealing with. And uh, you could be one of those people here, Taurus, so don't, don't be afraid to share your ideas. Uh, in the near future, you have the Five of Wands. Five of Wands can be a card of conflict and competition, but uh, really it's a caller card I call Indiana Jones. To me, it can represent going on like some sort of crazy adventure, 
to, you know, find some treasure, just like Indiana Jones. So, <laughs> you know, don't be afraid to go on any adventures. Don't be afraid to do anything new or anything uh, different that you could want to do. And in the next few months, you have the Devil and you have the Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands, of course, is a card of adventure or going on an adventure. I feel, or I'm sorry, this is a Page of Wands. Page of Wands is still a card of adventure, going on adventure. And so it'd be a good time for you to do that. I also feel, I would be like looking at separating away from anything that is stealing your energy with the devil. The devil can be like an energy vampire and it could just be something that is sucking your soul. You know, it could be a soul sucking person, job experience, could be anything. But I would be looking into those things with the devil, the things that, you know, steal your energy, the things that make you feel tired, all, all that. I would be looking at that and saying, do I need to keep doing this or not? I'm also getting love here, by the way. <laughs> there could be a Capricorn or a fire sign who's very passionate about you. Actually, if this is love, a person coming into love over the next few months, I feel like it will be very good, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, I think people only look at the devil as a bad thing, but it's not always true. It could just be a Capricorn or, or a person with Capricorn in their chart who's like really good for you. Uh, I feel like it's very passionate, very adventurous. Uh, next in the area of your closest relationships, you have the Nine of Pentacles, wanting to be alone. <laughs> so Nine of Pentacles, card of independence. And I do feel that some of you could just be feeling like you want to be alone at this time, Taurus. Nothing wrong with that. Nine of Pentacles is fine for that. I always like to say that Nine of Pentacles isn't, being, uh, isn't about being alone, though. I know a lot of readers... It's like, I think a lot of readers read the Nine of Pentacles as like toxic independence, which is like just being alone just because you, just to be alone. Like, you know, there's this movement, I believe, of toxic independence where everybody's talking about how, how independent they are. I'm like, we're great, your life is harder. It's like, we are better together. We are better working with other people and working together. Um, and so, you know, what I would say here is it could be being alone, but she's also not toxically independent. Normally she has three pentacles on one side and she has six pentacles on the other. And the three pentacles, that's what she is willing to give to a situation, whether it doesn't matter if it's love, a friendship, any type of relationship, not just love. She's willing to give those three pentacles. She keeps six for herself. She doesn't over give in a situation. She understands how to kind of invest in relationships. And that's really what I feel like the Nine of Pentacles is talking about. I feel like with that Five of Wands coming up right here, that you have learned like how to um, properly balance give and take in relationships in general. Uh, next in your future feelings, you have the Four of Cups. Again, I've been saying this for weeks. Right now we're manifesting the steps to, you know, to get something that we want. I think the most dangerous thing right now is feeling disappointed. <laughs> I know it's hard to not feel disappointed, but right now I feel that we could be like, you know, working on projects, we could be getting into relationships, whatever, that end up turning into a disappointment. I think we need to make sure that we don't get disappointed. I would be looking at the things that aren't working how you want them to as stepping stones or kind of like the next step. So I would make sure that you don't allow something to disappoint you because it's like disappointment is going to drag you down. We, we want you to go up. So look at it as a stepping stone. Say, okay, this project didn't work out on to the next, right? I think as long as you keep that forward momentum as hard as it, as it is to work on something like a relationship, a project, a business, a career, your health, and to have it not work out, it's like I really feel that we kind of need to motivate ourselves at this time because we're manifesting steps. Again, we're not manifesting the thing we want necessarily. If you take the step, then you're going to get what you want. I think that's the secret here. Uh, and finally, you have this reverie card. Uh, this card is kind of like a card of moving on to calmer shores in a lot of ways, card of luck and hope and happiness. And again, you're the only, remember I was saying on the Six of Swords that uh, I felt like it's crossing you. So it's like your guide or your guidance is missing on that Six of Swords. The person is in the boat right here. <laughs> so I feel like you're learning to kind of guide yourself at this time, Taurus. It's like you're learning how to um, listen to your own inner answers. It's almost like I see this reading as you um, becoming truly independent. Again, not toxically independent, but you're coming independent in the sense that you're making um, decisions on your own, which is a very powerful place to be. It's like you no longer need maybe the feedback of other people. Uh, I think you're, you're kind of making decisions from your heart, which is more important, right? So let's see. Uh, with the Six of Swords and the Queen of Cups, you have the Judgment card. So some sort of rebirth coming in for you. It's like, I feel like this is what you're hoping for with that Six of Swords. You're hoping, again, to get to the other side and to have some sort of rebirth in your life. That that makes perfect sense to me. 
Uh, with the Six of Cups, you have the Three of Cups. I really feel like people want to help you. Um, Three of Cups is a card of community, and Three of Cups is also kind of like a card of inspiration. Uh, that's not accurate tarot, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's that's Chris's tarot. Uh, every once in a while, I feel like the Three of Cups can be like a muse. Like, you know, a muse is something that motivates us to action. It's something that we, um, m that makes us successful. It's like sometimes, um, you know, it traditionally a muse was like a lover, like someone that you would work hard for because it's like they're your, your muse, right? But it could be something like a child. Like sometimes people have children, they become super successful because they want to be successful for the child, right? It's like the thing that makes them successful. I'm not saying it's a child. It could be anything. I think something is just motivating you here. That's what I feel intuitively with the three of cups. It's like you're, kind of discovering a reason to uh, create success in your life, whether that's in business and your health or whatever. So it feels really good to feel motivated on that three of cups. And with the hermit, here you go. Ace of wands, inspiration. Exactly what I was just talking about. Ace of wands is a card of inspiration. It is like in with the new, out with the old type of energy on the ace of wands. So I feel like there's a passionate new beginning coming in for you. And again, you're feeling very inspired to me, like I said, uh, with that three of cups. With the five of wands, you have the four of swords. Four of swords is a card of recovery, resting, relaxing, recovering. Uh, I feel that you really don't, I, I mean, I always tell people, it's like, yeah, of course, if you need to rest, if you need to relax, if you need to take time for yourself, do it. But I kind of feel the opposite here. I feel like this is saying, um, don't take too much time to rest and relax, um, <laughs> mostly because of that four of cups, right? It's like, I feel like if you have a disappointment, you know, have your pity party for a day or whatever, and then like move on. I feel like this is saying, you gotta keep the energy moving. With the devil and the page of wands, you have the five of swords. I would definitely be careful of any devil energy. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor, so do not take this as medical advice, but uh, I would watch your health. I would make sure you're staying healthy and doing things that are required to stay healthy in general with the devil, the page of wands. Page of wands could represent activity. So, you know, activity could be a very good idea for you right now just to stay healthy. Uh, with the nine of pentacles, you have the devil again. Um, so again, <laughs> this is coming up in your closest relationships. I'm telling you right now, it would not surprise me if you have a Capricorn approaching you or if you have someone with a lot of Capricorn entering into your life. I feel like this could be over the next few months. It might not be, you know, again, to me, tarot is actually timeless. It, there really is no time. So I feel even though we're setting it at the intention for this week, the messages that come in, come in, right? Can't control it. So I feel like for some of you, there's like a new opportunity in love coming in for you. Could be a Capricorn for sure, I feel. For others, I feel, again, the whole toxic independence thing, I would say make sure that you're not um, being independent to the point of being toxic. I'm not calling you toxic, but again, there comes a point where it's like if we need help on something, it, it is kind of like toxic not to allow someone else to help us. Um, uh, you know, and especially since, you know, really, especially at this time, I keep saying teamwork makes a dream work. It's like there are people in our lives that could probably move things along a lot faster or kind of provide us with other solutions. So, you know, definitely something to pay attention to. With the four cups, here you go. The world, accomplishments. I'm telling you right now, if as long as, as long as you're not getting disappointed with the steps, I feel like you are going to be very successful with that four cups. The four cups is like saying there are steps that are going to be appearing in front of you. And you know, I just get that disappointment feeling. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, right? So I want you to be prepared for it. It's like if you're working on a project and it doesn't work out, I'm not saying it's not gonna work out, but maybe it just needs a little more elbow grease. You know, sometimes I think we work on something and we're just coming at it from the wrong angle. You know, it's like maybe you're working on a project or you're writing a book and maybe it just needs a little change. Maybe it just needs a little bit of a switch up here. I feel like the saying, don't be disappointed. Make sure you keep working because clearly you're going to be successful. The world is a card of accomplishment. It's also a card of achievement as well. So I would keep pushing. Uh, with that reverie card at the end, you have the Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> so uh, I feel like there's a lot of reasons for you to be grateful. You know, Nine of Pentacles is a card of gratitude and luxuries. It's a card of like total abundance as well. So I feel like you're going to be very successful at this time. It's also a card of being very good at what you do. You know, she has grapes traditionally on the Nine of Pentacles and grapes in the tarot are meant to be something that's like difficult to grow here, Taurus. It's like something that requires some skill. I feel like this is saying you have the skills, you can do something that may be better than other people. 
So double that on those skills, but also don't be afraid to, you know, if you need help promoting the skills, maybe there's a person who can help you grow your skills or promote your skills. Maybe there's a person who has a better way of presenting it. I feel like the Nine of Pentacles is saying open up to allow other people to help you. Uh, really, this is a big achievement coming in for you as well. So I really like where this is going, but um, this looks pretty good. So thank you for being here, Taurus. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But uh, thank you and definitely enjoy your week.